Jay Landold here again with you. Um, this video here I'd like to show you how to build the uh, new JL floating piston shock package. This will go over the actual build of the new floating pistons and how uh, to do it properly and to ensure uh, no problems with your shock build. We're going to start off with showing you the components. We have our floating piston that is dished here that will go be facing down. This helps evacuate the air out of the shock. It has your o-ring seal and then the top where your bleeder hole will go that this special screw goes in that has an actual o-ring inside the screw so you don't have to tighten it that tight you just want to be able to crush it down on that o-ring and you'll seal up your shock completely. Then we have our spring that will fit over the head of the bolt that will uh, act against the cap. Here's a complete, uh, once they're together, what they'll look like. Now I want to go ahead and start. I have this shock pre-filled with oil. All the air has been worked out of this shock. I have 68 Losi oil in it right now. I want to fill this shock up all the way to the top. Now we're going to push a lot of oil out, but that ensures uh, no matter what, you're going to have no air in your shock, and shock oil isn't that expensive, so you can afford to waste just a little bit on the build. Now first off I want to start by using some of this green slime. Uh, I put it on the bottom of the rings. What I want to do is just put a little bit on that piston and work it around the o-ring. Just kind of get a nice grease coating on the o-ring and the side of the piston. Next what I'll do with the shaft extended out I'll go ahead and place this with the cone side down into the bore. See the o-ring in there and you can see already it's starting to push oil out. And there's an air bubble there it'll come out and I want to just push this down to where it's flush with the top of the bore right now. Next I'll compress the piston up into the bore and you can see it'll start depressing more oil and any other little air bubbles that's left in there out. After the shaft is completely compressed in there, I'll just take a, a screwdriver or a wrench or whatever you have and just compress the floating piston down in the bore some more until it bottoms out on the top of the piston. Once that's done, you want to leave oil actually in the top of the bore and take your screw, get it on the end of your wrench, and then place screw down in there. You want to tighten that down until it actually bottoms out on the piston and you can start to rotate the actual floating piston inside the bore. So it's seated down and it's actually rotating the piston. At what time now the shock is completely sealed. So I'm just going to wipe the oil off the top, hose it down with some motor spray, electrical cleaner just to get any kind of extra oil out of there <clears throat> and at what time now the piston will actually travel up and down in the bore because it is sealed next you'll take your spring and you can pull the shaft all the way out and you can click it on the top of the head of that bolt then take your cap and we will not run any uh, screw in your bleeder cap. We want to leave that vented so there's no air pressure behind there. Any air that's going to be inside here can breathe in and out with no actual air pressure behind it either because our spring is going, to, is going to act on our floating piston. We don't want any air pressure in there. So basically now you'll just take your cap and screw it down just like you would. And just tighten it up on the body and there you have it. You got a nice shock. It's got smooth, consistent rebound at the same velocity no matter where it's at in the stroke. And you are set. Once again, my name is Jay Landolt, and thank you for your time.